Happy New Year, everyone. This has been a really long time since I've done any sort of video update with the SWAT project. So I figured I'd take a little bit of time to talk about last year and how 2023 went uh, for the car and for the team, kind of update you on some of the plans that we have going into 2024 and what our season will look like. So starting off with 2023, uh, obviously starting off at the Olympus Rally, the first real competitive debut of the car, uh, didn't go very well. Uh, we went into that rally after a few days of filming with Top Gear and doing American Tune with Rob Dom. And uh, unfortunately, we just didn't catch that the wheel bearing was failing. And so uh, failed right on the launch of the very first stage. And obviously that didn't go very well. But uh, we came back to Oregon Trail Rally and it went incredibly well. <laughs> Uh, for the most part, a lot of second place stage times to Subaru Motorsports USA uh, and was really happy with that. Uh, the performance definitely seemed to be there. There's lots of potential. Uh, unfortunately, uh, on the towards the end of the second day or the last day, actually, the uh, real uh, rear diff blew up. Uh, I would say that's also a maintenance issue. So uh, something for me to learn from. Um, and then going into the fall, we did Tour de Forest Rally. Had a decent start to that, but we got a flat, losing a lot of time, uh, and then had some more mechanical issues. Uh, we did end up finishing, so that was the first actual finish for that car. I think we ended up still getting like fourth overall or something like that. Um, but still not a very good result for what we were looking to do. And then we put a little bit more effort into the car and went to Big White Winter Rally up in Canada. It was the final national event of the year for the Canadian series uh, and we ended up winning overall. So great cap to the season to go from a very terrible DNF to winning an overall national event was actually Krista and my uh, first overall national win. So. Um, you know, even in snow, the car did great. It was uh, not terrible to drive by any means, no crazy understeer or anything like that. So uh, really, really happy overall with the car's performance. However, going into 2024, there's some things that I want to change. So uh, coming back from Big White Rally, you can see that there was uh, quite a bit of rust on the car. So I've been tearing, kind of tearing everything apart looking uh, at everything, getting it cleaned up. Uh, obviously not much cleaned up over here, but you know, starting that tear down process and getting things ready to go. But while I've been doing that, I've uh, been actually taking things apart quite a bit uh, and then scanning them in with uh, this Einstar 3D scanner. If you've heard of this, it's a great budget option for a 3D scanner. Uh, still, you know, somewhat pricey, but I grabbed it on sale. Uh, you know, for a 3D scanner that's under $1,000, this thing has been great, especially for me as, you know, essentially a hobbyist. I'm not scanning things professionally or anything like that. So I've been taking all these parts and bringing them into SolidWorks. Um, you can see kind of a chassis scan here where I was picking up the uh, mounting points. But what I can do is uh, just kind of hide that. And then you can see at least for the rear suspension, I have, you know, very basic models of all the suspension components, you know, the riggers, the trailing arms, lateral links, subframe, things like that, uh, and the knuckle rotor hat, all that stuff. So I can get basically the entire geometry of the car modeled up into CAD so that uh, I can understand what's going on on the kinematics of the car uh, and see areas for improvement. Um, you know, like I said, the car doesn't handle terribly, but you compare a car like this, which we can essentially say is a, well, minus the swap, is essentially a Group N type car. Um, and it just isn't nearly as responsive, it isn't nearly as agile as say a Rally 2, like a Fiesta uh, or a Skoda and things like that. Um, now, given the size of the car and the weight, it's never going to be as agile as one of those cars. Even just the classes between them uh, isn't going to allow for that. Um, you know, it's something like 300 pound difference between what my minimum weight is versus a Rally 2. So 
Uh, nothing that can be done there, but I can try to optimize the car as best as I possibly can. So uh, that's my plan for the off season. I'm gonna be doing a lot of work uh, in SolidWorks and then hopefully kind of getting uh, a point cloud of all of the pivot points and things like that where things mount up. Um, and then I want to throw that into a suspension kinematics program. Not sure which one yet. There's a couple options out there. Some of them are pricier than others and uh, I'm kind of still evaluating those, but my goal is to update everybody on some of the things that I'm changing and why in my design process um, I'm no expert in suspension kinematics, but I do kind of understand the basics. Um, and I can also just kind of try to reverse engineer what some of the more modern cars are doing, um, just so I can hopefully make this car a little bit better. You know, I think the big thing is trying to make it a little bit more agile, uh, getting a little bit better turn in. So it's just, you know, more responsive and things like that. So, uh, I think there's opportunities and all of that. Um, and yeah, I think everything else with the car is pretty solid except for the cooling system. Definitely one of the problems that we had at Oregon Trail Rally was overheating. Uh, a lot of other people were overheating too, so I don't know um, how much there is to be improved there, but definitely uh, I would like to implement a couple changes with the car. Uh, namely, I have the cooling system with the uh, original mechanical water pump blanked off. Uh, and it's just relying on the, um, or the electric water pump that I have on the radiator. Uh, I think one of the challenges there is that the um, electric water pump, you know, we consider it a high volume, low pressure pump, whereas mechanical is gonna provide a lot more pressure. So I don't think we've been pressurizing the system incredibly well. So uh, I think we're gonna throw that back on there and uh, see how that goes and possibly improve a little bit of the ducting that goes to that radiator. Uh, I think that will yield the results that we're looking for. Um, other than that, I think we can, I think she's due for a cosmetic refresh. She's pretty beat up. You can see the wraps just peeling off. We've got, you know, fiberglass just kind of falling apart over here. And just, you know, the exhaust is all banged up from getting rocks thrown at it. And it just, it doesn't look great. So um, I don't know if that necessarily means a new livery, but definitely means I'm gonna be replacing probably all of the wrap on the car and cleaning up body panels and just making it look a lot nicer. Even, you know, looking into these fender wells, underbody is all torn up. And back here, you can see how big white didn't treat us well with a lot of rust. It's probably a little dark, but gives you ideas. Just everything is beat up and you know, it's a rally car. So that's what's going to happen uh, over seasons and seasons. So I'm just going to put a little bit of effort into kind of cleaning it all up and making it nice again. Um, so our plans after all this gets complete or if, you know, some version of it gets complete uh, is to do a few more rallies this year compared to last, uh, starting with a Wild West rally in March, and then we'll do Olympus and Oregon Trail rally in the spring. And then we're gonna head up and do what I'm calling the Canadian double header where the CRC or the Canadian Rally Championship has scheduled um, Rocky Mountain rally and Pacific Forest rally one week apart uh, up in British Columbia area. So uh, we're going to go up there, take a week off of work, do the first event, stay up there, reprep the car, uh, and then do Pacific Forest Rally, that second event, and then head back. I think we'll take the summer off, um, do a little reset, and then head into the fall doing uh, Tour de Forest Rally, Mike Nagel Rally. Uh, both of those are regional events here in the Pacific Northwest, and then finish up and do the Canadian uh, finale with Big White again, and hopefully defend our win there. So those are the big things. Uh, actually, one more other big thing is uh, you might have noticed that we're no longer in uh, the primitive shop. Um, you know, spent most of 2023 working out of that shop and, um, you know, I definitely owe them a debt of gratitude for all the help. Uh, Blake, Joel and Kirsten, all of them uh, that work at, at Primitive uh, for housing me. Uh, for that year and basically allowing the swap to happen. So, you know, I took up a corner of their shop for a while and was able to use a lot of their tools and fabrication and equipment and stuff to make the swap happen. So definitely appreciate the time that I spent there. I'll miss them. Uh, so they're still not that far away, but we got a house a few months ago uh, with a three car garage. So this is the new home of the rally car. Uh, it's not really set up super well yet. Um, definitely missing some critical fabrication equipment and things like that, but uh, I'll be, you know, picking up things here and there as I need them over the next few months as I start, you know, making, 
you know, whatever it is, whether it's new subframes or control arms and things like that uh, to, uh, to make what I think will be beneficial happen. So um, yeah, everything is going really well here. I, you know, again, we'll hopefully make some more videos about the things that I'm doing and why and, and share that and hopefully maybe get some ideas from all of you. I'm sure there's some people that are watching this video that are far more knowledgeable at suspension kinematics than I am. Um, and yeah, again, make this car a little bit better, faster, be a little bit more competitive, hopefully get a little bit closer to Subaru Motorsports and close that gap up. Um, and yeah, have a lot of fun. Anyways, thanks for watching. If there's anything that you would like to see content wise, leave a comment. Um, or even if you just have a question, I'm trying to be really diligent about responding to comments and things like that. So feel free to ask away or if you want to see anything, just let me know. Anyways, thanks for watching. Four plus right into five minus left and five right long.